Hello folks. I realize this won't work for everybody, but it works for me pretty good. And that's because not everyone has a drain right beside the sump pump well like I do. I could also place the secondary palm pump hose into the drain pipe that the main pump uses, but I made it simple by just doing it this way. You see, I just had my main pump float switch fail, but luckily the pump remained on all the time. If it had not been running, it would have filled the well and overflowed. Well, since the green pump failed, I added a second pump, the black one. Its float level is slightly higher, so if the primary fails, the black secondary one will take over. But again, these both require power from the wall. You see, if the power was to go out from an electrical storm or something, it would also fill the well and overflow. But with my simple backup relay, I can relax and not worry. I could also add a float wet switch to this setup to make sure the backup pond pump turns on if the main pump did fail, but this is the power out setup I'm showing you now. Well, since I already had the relay and an extra battery backup unit, it was fun for me to tinker and just see if I could do it without spending more money. I'm actually using one of the smallest pond pumps in this demo, as it's the only one I actually had on hand. It pumps 75 gallons per hour and uses only 5.2 watts of power. That's pretty impressive. That's more than a gallon a minute. And I found that it's actually sufficient to keep the water level from rising. It completely empties the sump to a level to keep the main pump submerged as you want it to be. You don't want that pump main pump to get dry. If I had more water coming in, I could get a bigger pond pump. And even so, the power consumed by these small pond pumps are so low that this 650 VA backup will run this pump for over 12 days continuously and that's really plenty. The backup I'm using is for computers and modems or routers. It's a cyber power version. I have them on my router and on my computer so even if a glitch in the power grid which seems to happen a lot when a storm hits here everything stays running including my alarm which needs the router to alert my phones. So make sure you always have a power backup on your router because if somebody cuts your main power you're going to have no alarm system and no ring doorbell or ring floodlight cam. Okay, here's the simple setup. I'm going to show you. Here's your main power supply. Now this is shown with the main power supply off. It failed. Lightning knocked out your main power. It's off. So this relay, the contacts have released from the magnetic hold here. And they are now coming from here to here completing this circuit. This circuit is run with the backup power supply which is also plugged into the wall but if the power goes off this turns on you get 115 volts AC right here in a uh, simulated sine wave and uh, you're just going to run the one I ran the white wire through here and uh, over right straight over to the other side to run my small pump. Make sure you use a grounded setup and uh, it's real simple. The power comes back on, this coil gets energized, it pulls this up, the contacts are free, everything shuts off, and you're back to your main uh, sump pump in the well. So a uh, pretty simple setup, and uh, it works for me. Again, like I say, you can put a pretty big pump on there. This gray piece is the mount that the relay plugs into, making it really easy to connect the wires. Other types of relays are available, you just want to make sure the specs are the same as I show here. The light is optional too, but I like it. It's 115 volt AC, 1 quarter watt, and is on when the wall power is on and the relay is energized. It goes out when the power goes out. Okay, float is rising, the white float is rising, 
you can see there. And the main pump turns on. And it shuts off. And that pumps that right out that out to, out to the outside. So there's a tiny little hole in that tube right there, the white tube. So when the pump comes on, it'll blow a little bit out that hole. That's what you'll see all that water coming from and it splashes up against the side. The reason that's there is so that there is no chance of uh, a vapor lock basically. That air sound you hear right there is from the uh, radon detector. Okay. Okay, so let's say the main pump fails. I'm going to go ahead and unplug it right now. This is the main pump. And now, the backup pump is over there. You can see the water coming in, the filling up the sump. And that black pump is going to raise that lever. So that one shut off now. So that's working good. That pumps it out this way, right here. Okay, the power is going to fail. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off right now. And you can see the power off. And here we go, the on pump is now pumping out there. And the uh, backup power unit is running that. We'll turn the power back on. Power back on. This pump stops. Here I have a water sensor, which is connected through this wire that runs up to the wall and connects to the sender. This tells my phone that there's water present. So that's how I have it set up. And uh, maybe this will work out for you. You never know. It's working out for me just fine.